Okay, we're going to look at how we solve uh, simultaneous equations when you've got one linear and one quadratic. We're not going to have many questions doing this, but this could come up in the course of it of uh, an exam question, whatever. So we're not going to do any many questions. It's just as part of our classwork directly on this. The solution to the simultaneous equations are, are the point of intersection when drawn on a graph. So, for example, here, if you look at this one, this thing, you could draw this as a straight line. This equation represents a straight line, and this equation represents a curve. So I don't know what they look like, but I'm just going to guess one's going to be uh, that sort of shape and then the other one would be a straight line so it's not going to look anything like this really but the solutions would be the coordinates of where they cross so if you draw these things out graphically the solutions are these coordinates so it's got an x value and it's got a y value likewise over here you've got an x value and you've got a y value that's very important okay we're going to look at how we actually go about uh, about doing this uh, now Okay, so in this one it says, find the coordinates of the points of intersection of the line x plus 4y equals 5 and the curve x squared plus xy minus 3y squared equals 5. Give your answer to two decimal places. So, to do this, first thing we want to do, uh, we'll get the pen up here. First thing we want to do is just rearrange, and in this case it's definitely going to be easier to make x a subject in my linear equation. So I'm going to say x is equal to, uh, x is equal to, 5 minus 4y. And what we're then going to do is sub that into the quadratic equation. So my quadratic equation was this thing. And we're going to, everywhere we see x, we're going to replace that with 5 minus 4y. So it was x squared, so it's 5 minus 4y squared, plus uh, x, which is now 5 minus 4y, times my y, and then minus 3y squared is equal to 5. Okay, if you do this out, don't, uh, don't skip any steps. This step here, what I'm doing from here to here, is a big mistake people make. They don't take their time and expand that as a double bracket. So just write that out again, the whole thing. All I've done in that line is just change my brackets 5 minus 4y all squared to 5 minus 4y upon 5 minus 4y. So take your time and do this properly. 5 times the 5 is going to be 25. 5 times a minus 4y is going to be minus 20y. Then minus 4y times a 5 is minus 20y. Minus 4y times minus 4y will be plus 16y squared. And 5 times a y is 5y. Minus 4y times a y is minus 4y squared. And minus 3y squared. And that's equal to 5. Okay, it's a quadratic. So we want to bring everything over to one side. And put it equal to, tidy up and put it equal to 0. So if I do that, I'm going to get 9y squared minus 35y plus 20 is equal to 0. Now they've already told us, give the answers to 2dp, so that would tell me that it's not going to factorize nicely, so I wouldn't waste any time on a question, I guess, even trying to factorize it. I would just go ahead, I would just go ahead and, uh, and use my quadratic formula. So here, uh, we're going to look at this thing, and we're going to uh, just use your quadratic formula to solve it. So here, y is equal to and remember it is, I'll just write that down, minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So in this case, your b is minus 35, so minus b will be 35, plus or minus. Um, we talked about this in one of the previous videos. Minus 35 is your b, so put that brackets, minus 35, then minus 4 times my a, which is 9, times my c, which is 20 all divided by 2 times my a, which is 9. So if I do that out, I'm going to get 35 plus or minus. And then what I would advise you to do, so we work this out inside. So it was brackets minus 35 squared minus 4 times 9 times minus, times 20. So you do, file that all into your calculator, and you will get 505. So, so far, we've got 35 plus or minus the square root of 505 all over 2 times 9, which is going to be 18. So when you do that in your calculator, you get y is equal to 3.19290, that's the 5 dps, or the other one you would get 0 0.69599, again the 5 dps. We'll just finish this off over here. So you've got the y values, what you then have to do is find the corresponding y x values. So just say when y is equal to 3.19290, 
x is equal to 5 minus 4 times the 3.192, uh, sorry, 3.19290. That means your x is equal to minus 7.77. One six. Also, when y is equal to 0.69599, x is going to be equal to 5 minus 4 times uh, 0.69599, which is going to be equal to 2 2.21604. Okay, now notice the question that asked me to go to two decimal places. In my working out, I've gone to 5, so it's definitely going to be accurate enough. So my answer, the first coordinate, and did we ask for the ASPR coordinates? Let's have a look and see. We'll just check that. The first coordinate was, uh, yep, give the answers to find the coordinates of the points of intersection, the 2DP. So it has to be given as a coordinate. So the first coordinate is going to be minus 7.77 and 3.19. And the second coordinate then is going to be 2.22.70, and they're both the two decimal places. Okay, we're going to start looking at our algebraic fractions. To add or subtract two fractions, you must form equivalent fractions with the same lowest common denominator. Once this has been achieved, add and subtract the numerators, and just be careful to subtract the entire numerator, not just the first term. And all fractions must be left in their simplest form, so you will lose marks on that, so factorize and cancel if appropriate. Uh, we can use this technique when solving algebraic fractions. Uh, do as above, then multiply by the denominator. This first example says simplify, and it is a subtracting fractions one. Now the first thing you've got to do here is, I'm just going to say this is equal to, and I'm going to factorize both of these denominators. So the numerators are fine, we'll leave them as they were, but these denominators factorize. So use your sum and product method to factorize, and I've skipped out the working out, but bottom line, the denominator of the first one turns out to be x plus 2 upon x plus 2. The denominator of the second one is x plus 2 upon x plus 3. Okay, a common denominator. Now a big mistake that people would make would be to say that the common denominator is x plus 2 upon x plus 2 upon x plus x plus 2 upon x plus 2 upon x plus 2 upon x plus 3. That is all necessary. Uh, your denominator has to should be a lowest common denominator. So the lowest common denominator is going to be x plus 2 upon x plus 2 upon x plus 3. So if you look here, this denominator is x plus 2 upon x plus 2. It needs to get multiplied by x plus 3 just to get this. So that means its top line also gets multiplied by x plus 3. So that becomes 2x upon x plus 3 over here. And we'll just put that x minus 2 in a bracket now. Uh, this denominator needs another x plus 2 term in it. So that means it needs to get multiplied by x plus 2. So its top line also gets multiplied by x plus 2. So we have another x plus 2 here. Okay, we'll just go ahead and we'll multiply our numerator. Good practice to not multiply your denominator, but I can notice I can change something in my denominator to make it look a bit prettier. I'll write that as x plus 2 all squared times x plus 3. Multiply your numerator, you'll get 2x squared plus 6x, and then minus, uh, just be careful, I've left that as a minus there, because I'm going to have my, I'm going to expand this bracket, so it's minus a whole thing here. So if we multiply x minus 2 upon x plus 4, you should notice that's a difference of two squares. So that's x squared minus 4. And then we'll go up here to finish this off just. So now we just have, that's just going to be x, 2x squared plus 6x minus x squared. And then minus minus 4, which is going to be plus 4. Still all over x plus 2 all squared, x plus 3 which works out to be 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared on the top line, plus 6x plus 4. And then you have x plus 2 all squared, x plus 3. Right, one thing for us to check here 
is you look at your top line and see if your top line factorizes. So the top line does not factorize anymore. That means this is as far as we can go. So uh, just say we asterisk as far as we can go. As top line does not factorize. Okay, right, you're now ready to a whole pile of questions from your algebra and equations uh, booklet. Exercise 1a, and just do the odds. Exercise 1b, do the odds, and exercise 1c, and do the odds there. So there's plenty of extra ones if you need them, just do the evens, of course, uh, but that should be all for us.